Good day fellow investors, I have recently announced that alongside my 10,000 initial stock market portfolio where I add 1,000 every month, I will be launching a 100,000 lump sum portfolio, value investing core portfolio that will be also the base for the fund I hope to manage in the next few years. And there has been a lot of commotion, especially on my stock market research platform, what's the difference between the two uh, portfolios, the lump sum portfolio and the small portfolio with monthly additions. So I decided to really make a video focused on that and then give a better indication on what and why goes into one to the other portfolio. So in this video I'll explain the small portfolio with monthly additions, you can call it the dollar cost averaging portfolio and then also the lump sum portfolio. And I will also add an example of two companies that fit one but not yet the other portfolio and this will be also be the core difference which is in, which is in risk management. The lump sum portfolio is 100,000 of my money, I do not accept risk, that's it. The growing portfolio, it will also be more than 240,000 of my money over 20 years, but given that I add money every month, every month I can manage that risk differently. So let me start by discussing one portfolio, then the other, and also give you a few examples. So in May 2018, I started a portfolio of 10,000 where I add 1,000 per month and will be doing that for the next 20 years. Adding 1,000 per month made the portfolio grow from 10,000 to 18,000, 18,200 by the end of this year. A bit more than 18,000 because we made two profitable trades and some stocks were, went up, unfortunately. So that happens sometimes. There are two powerful forces be behind this portfolio. So starting 10,000 and adding 1,000 per month. The first one is adding 1,000 per month. Buffett usually uses to say the key is to invest to through thick and thin and especially invest through thin. If I invest one month, 1000 per month constantly into my portfolio, no matter what, I know that whatever happens with the stock market, with stocks, with my holdings, if they go down, I can buy simply more and more of them because every month there will be new money coming in. So whatever happens I know I can okay I can even take a little bit more risk so for example a company is at 100 I know it's a good buy but I know it can fall to 50 I simply know okay at 50 I can buy more similarly as I said yesterday in the stock market news episode stocks can go either up or down and can really go down by adding on a monthly basis you can buy what's cheap at the moment no matter what you bought in March of 2009, it was probably the best investment in your life, but few bought then. Therefore, by adding a thousand per month, it allows us to buy really, really on the cheap and increase our long-term returns. What I don't like are ETFs because those are market cap, cap weighted usually and the more a stocks, stock goes up, the more they buy of that stock, even if you dollar cost average into them. What I like doing is doing the opposite. If something that has value over the long term goes down, I like to buy more of that and I like to buy less of that that goes up and is even perhaps overvalued. So that's the first strategy and the monthly additions allow me to do that constantly over the very long term. For example, in June of 2018, I was researching Brazil. We went through all the stocks in Brazil and bought one there. The dividend was good, the earnings yield was also good and the risk reward was acceptable. Since then, the stock has appreciated significantly, which is not good for me because I would always like to buy more, but okay, then it was cheap, so that is what we bought back then. We bought Brazil on the cheap. Uh, last month, I added a little bit of Facebook because it's getting cheap, and this is my goal. For example, look at the cost. I don't know when the cost basis was made, depending on accounting probably 1991 or something but if you invest in businesses over time you don't care about what happens with the fluctuations on those stock prices 20 years from when you invested look at american express company if it's 15 billion or 20 billion the first row in this chart for buffett it doesn't really matter because those fluctuations are really big now but the core is the cost at what he bought them 
which was in this case it's written 1.2 billion but i think it was even lower so 1.2 billion the current market value is 15 billion so buffett focuses on the business on the dividends on the earnings that he can reinvest and that is what leads to long-term returns market valuations those will always be fluctuating and this is my core this is what i want to build a similar portfolio over the next 20 years where i buy more of the great businesses or i invest big when something is cheap that allows me to compound dividends over the long term it would be even better if we had something like this but unfortunately for small investors it's not possible these are all stakes that buffett has into not traded companies from geico uh, reinsurance uh, electricity manufacturing businesses duracell lubrizol netjazz precision steel warehouse and a lot of companies that buffett has bought over the years he doesn't have a market valuation for them because those companies are not traded all, the only thing he cares about the earnings about the dividends and how he can compound them this is what would make much easier would make my job much easier because then i really have to focus on the businesses and in this small portfolio i hope to end up with something like this over the next 20 30 years but it takes time to end up like this the key is to accumulate good businesses when those are cheap and given that i want also portfolio diversification i want to be build a good diversified portfolio over the long term something in the line of this 20 percent developed markets and global 8% Latin America, 8% China. I think we are even more in China now because I considered some stocks there as really cheap. We'll see how that evolves over the next 10, five years. Asia, Hedges Gold, still doing a lot of research to get that exposure, but by buying 1000 per month, a little bit more uh, some month, a little bit less other months, I think I will build something really, really nice over time. So the goal of the small portfolio is to reach an investment exposure of at least 80% like here. So 80% investment, 20, 25% in cash to take advantage of the opportunities. And then also the additional investments will uh, add, allow for uh, averaging down if necessary of buying more of the great businesses. The key difference between the 10,000 portfolio with monthly additions and the lump sum 100% 100,000 portfolio is risk. With this small portfolio, if some stock goes down, I can simply buy more because there is more and more money coming in every month. And then if the business is bad, I can si simply stop adding to it. And with the big portfolio, I am really making it a core value investing portfolio, which means that you cannot find the core value investment anytime in life. Sometimes you will have to wait two, three years to find a core value investment that fits all my investment criteria. Let me show you. So these are my questions, 10 questions that I want to be answered with a yes before investing in a core portfolio position, be it in the small portfolio or in the lump sum portfolio. Is it a business I can understand well, squarely within my circle of competence? Some of the questions are borrowed from Pub Rye. Do I know the intrinsic value of the business today and with a high degree of confidence how it's likely to change over the next few years? Is the business priced at a large discount to its intrinsic value today and in two to three years? Over 50% margin of safety, large discount. This is something extremely rare to find in this market, but in the small portfolio I want to be invested and therefore I have to loosen up on this criteria. If stocks go down and there is a margin of safety i'll simply buy more would i be willing to invest a large part of my net worth into this business is the downside minimal does the business have a moat is it run by able and honest managers does the business offer a 15 percent earnings yield over the long term is it a sector with positive tailwinds how does this compare to other possible investments in the sector by answering those 10 questions you really have to be an sob because you really say no 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 a lot and all the time and only when something really fits all the 10 questions with a big yes only then you buy in 2018 nefsun at two was an sob investment because okay everybody's capitulating nobody wants to touch it 
I was buying big and I had my largest position in Epson in January 2018. Further, now I have only found one that's still a maybe for me. I'm still looking, okay, whether it's all a yes, 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 waiting for it to go even lower, hopefully, and then it will be my first portfolio position. If I don't find anything in the next two years, but then I find free investments in 2022, I'll be extremely happy. By the way, SOB means Sven's Opportunistic Buying Portfolio. I don't know what you were thinking about. So with such opportunistic buying, I'm really going to the core of value investing, margin of safety, uh, limited capital loss, limited possibility of permanent capital loss, high earnings yield, dividends, compounding, etc., etc. With the small portfolio, I can be much more flexible. I don't know whether, for example, another company that I own, Ping An Insurance, the big insurer in China, I still don't know whether it is a great business. I'm covering the stock, I'm looking at it, I'm following the earnings conference, following the news that come out and seeing how that fits the long scheme of things because such a company might do great over the long term, might compound earnings, it is investing in fintech in everything that is big in China. So, and it's giving me exposure to China, to healthcare in China, etc. But I still don't know whether it's a great business. So I have invested, I think on the 18,000 portfolio, uh, 500 is invested in Ping An. If the business continues to develop greatly, if I see, okay, this is getting better and better, and then the stock market gives me better entry opportunities, I might buy more, more and more of that business. And if it gets so low that it is traded at a margin of safety, that it is a crazy buy, good management, moat and everything, then I might, in might include it in the lump sum portfolio. So this is the difference. If it ends up badly, I just have 500 euros invested in that company, which in the grand scheme of things will be nothing. Let me show you. So this is the current portfolio, 18,000. In this case, I've put dollars just to make it more uh, easy to watch. Yearly additions will be 12,000 for the next 20 years, 19 and a half now. And I have discounted the yearly additions to a present value with a discount rate of 10%. The sum of the money that I will be adding, thus what I have to still add, $234,000 to the portfolio, 1,000 per month for 20 years. The sum of that 240,000 addition is around 100. The current portfolio is cash 10,000 as a lot of research awaits me in 2019 to really have a diversified portfolio. The present value of the future inflows is 100,000. The total portfolio now is should be around 120,000. And Ping An Insurance is $500 of that 120,000 portfolio. So if I see that develop into a great business, it might get bigger, bigger and bigger. So let's say that Pingan doesn't develop into a great business and the portfolio keeps growing, stocks do good, some stocks do not that good. I add on the ones that do really good. In 20 years, I have hoped to have a portfolio of a million dollars. Why a million? Because if I add 12,000 annually, I add 20 years to grow. If the compounding rate is 12.5%, which is my target, then I get to 1 million as a result. So let's say Ping An isn't a good company, doesn't develop into a good company. I have 500 euros in it. Now, what is the effect of 500 euros on a $1 million portfolio? Some stocks will compound at 25%, some stocks will not compound, like if Ping An is bad. So that's how I ba balance this, that's how I learn, because investing is a long-term, lifelong process. You learn, you see, you compound your knowledge. And that's what I do with the small portfolio. With the big portfolio, only what I am 100% convinced. The difference shouldn't be that big over the long term. 100,000, no additions, 20 years, compounding at 12.5%. The future value should be, again, around a million. So I hope that these two portfolios lead me to 2 million in value over the next 20 years. So the risk exposure difference is the key between the two portfolios. With the small portfolio with monthly additions, I can manage that. Monthly additions allow me to 
manage, add more of the good businesses and stop adding of the small businesses, which become a smaller, smaller and smaller part of the portfolio. With the lump sum portfolio, I really have to focus on managing risk, value investing, core value investing. And there the key is to be patient, wait for the opportunities to come to me. And the more I learn, the more I compound my knowledge, the more opportunities I will have. And perhaps one a year, I have started with the Buffett punch card, 20 opportunities over the next 10, 20 years will be plenty and enough for me. For now, I have found one that might fit that portfolio. Nevson was a great, as I said, fit for that portfolio. Uh, in January 2018, it was my largest portfolio position. So that's what I do. Please check my stock market research platform uh, to see all the portfolio, everything what I do. There is really a lot of reports, my portfolio, everything. And the 30 day money back guarantee. So you have nothing to lose. And uh, therefore check it out. It's not for everybody. So you might learn something. It's not for you. Just ask your money back. No questions asked. You get your money back onto your bank account. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to your comments. Any questions, please let me know in the comment sections and I'll see you in the next video.